Hello, and welcome back. This video is about gameplay, ability, system, attributes. Attributes are used for things like range, fire rate, and damage, and just about anything that has a value that you might want to modify using gas. And a special thanks to all my supporters. Thank you for helping me help others. So to use gas attributes, the first thing we need to have is an attribute set. So for that, we're going to create a new C++ class. This will be based on attribute set, which says here it defines a set of all gameplay attributes for your game. We're going to call this TD base set. We're going to let uh, Unreal do its thing. that done, we're going to create two more, which are based on base set. So we're going to create another one, which is for the tower. So this will be TD tower. And similarly, TD enemy. With those done, we can close this, close the editor. Wait for the red bar to go away at the bottom, hit reload, and we have all our new files. So initially, when you override an attribute set, it gives you nothing. So we're going to replace all this. I'm overriding pre-attribute change and pre-attribute base change, and then I'm adding a new function clamp attribute on change. And then I have this handy macro up here. This macro does a lot of stuff. I just I selected it, I hit control F3 to search, and then when I go into the attribute set base class, hit F3, and it'll take show you down here. So this is something that's supplied by Unreal, but they don't actually define the macro for some reason. Um, but what it's doing is then it's it's calling these other macros. And it's for a bunch of utilities like up here, getting the health attribute or or health itself, setting it, etc. We'll, we'll use a little bit of that in this video. That's all good there. We want to create these three functions. So in here we have our pre-attribute change and base change, and they're just calling the super version and clamp attribute on change. The intent of clamp attribute is just to clamp an attribute. Let's see that as well. Uh, again, back in our attribute set here, if we search for pre-attribute, the comments here effectively kind of say the same thing. This is what pre-attribute change does, and this function is meant to enforce things like clamping an attribute. So with that done, we'll go into our tower set, replace all this. We're including ability system component because that is used by the macro. And to declare any single attribute, we just want to make sure that it is a U property. We're going to declare the attribute as in the F gameplay attribute data. And then we use the macro, sending along the name of the attribute set and the name of the variable. We're also defining a constructor here so that in our CPP file, we can just set default values for the attributes. Similarly, in enemy set, we're doing very much the same. We're including ability system component. We have a constructor. We're defining health, max health, move speed, and damage attributes, and we're going to use clamp attribute on change in this case. So in our CPP file, we're setting our default values as well, and then in clamp attribute on change, this is being called from the pre-attribute functions, and it sends along an attribute and the new value. So we make sure that the attribute that was sent in is the health attribute, we're just taking the new value and clamping it between 0 and our max health value. 
And lastly, to make this actually work for our tower in our tower pawn. So our tower pawn now has a tower set attribute, which also means in our CPP file, we want to include TD tower set. And in our constructor, tower set equals create default sub object for UTDS tower set with the name of tower set. And of course, don't forget the semicolon. all good. I'll see you in the editor. So since our attribute set is being assigned to our tower and not the player, showing the attributes is a little bit uh, is a little different. We could just use the show debug if it were the, the player. Instead, we're going to just display the values uh, and begin play. So I'm just going to drag that out. I want to call print. to append a lengthy string. So this will include range, fire rate, and damage. So to get an attribute value, we can drag in our ability system component. We want to call get gameplay attribute value. We're sending along the attribute that we want to get the value for. And then that's being converted. Oops. You can duplicate that a few times. Look these up. Update the attribute fire rate and damage. And then when we run that, we see that it was a range of 100, fire rate of one and damage of 10, our default values. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and would like to see more, you know what to do. And if you would like to support this channel, watch these videos two weeks early, or just download the project files, you can do so through my Patreon linked below.